over millions of years, animals have adapted and evolved an arsenal of deadly weapons to hunt, defend, and attack. Teeth, claws, antlers, electricity, stings, camouflage, odor, and poisons are all being used to devastating effect in the animal armory. In the frigid waters of the Arctic, the walrus depends on its surprising ability to spit in order to feed. For the cobra, its venomous projections are fired with intent to blind their predators. And for the jawfish, spitting provides them with a home and the means to defend it. When it comes to stings, Individual bees will sacrifice themselves to attack a threat to their colony. Jellyfish trawl their stingers through the world's oceans to capture prey and ward off predators. In Australia, the humble echidna is coated in a near impenetrable armor of spines. Stingrays, despite their infamy, reserved their deadly sting for self-defense. Whereas predatory centipedes deliver a paralyzing sting to immobilize their victims. Treacherous and ever-changing frozen landscape, the Arctic and its surrounding waters are among the most hostile environments on the planet. Few animals are equipped to survive in the Arctic's harsh climate, and fewer still can appear comfortable in this sub-zero world. But the rotund, easy-going walrus provides exception to the rule. Highly social animals, walruses are commonly found in massive herds, numbering in the tens of thousands. Between feeding and fighting, much of the walrus's time is spent lounging about in an environment where most animals would perish. Conserving energy as they rest, walruses are protected from the elements by a tough hide encasing an insulating layer of blubber up to 10 centimeters thick. Famed for their tusks, the walrus's elongated canines can reach a meter in length. A potentially fatal instrument in self-defense, the tusks are also relied upon during the breeding season when males engage in fierce combat to establish social dominance. But the walrus has another unexpected weapon in its arsenal one that is commonly used but rarely witnessed, spit. With adults weighing up to two tons, the walrus's tremendous bulk makes them slow and cumbersome on land. But in the water, the walrus suddenly becomes agile, and it is here that their secret weapon comes into play.
feeding primarily on mollusks, the walrus must consume about 5% of their body weight per day. This translates to between three and 6,000 clams in a single feeding session. Fossicking in the murky depths, walruses must locate and remove their stubborn food source from the sea floor, and they rely on spit to do so. Drawing large amounts of water into their uniquely vaulted mouths, walruses are able to fire a high-pressure jet stream at the otherwise inaccessible mollusks. Clearing out the surrounding debris, the walrus's spit reveals and loosens their food source, allowing for easy removal and consumption. And once the soft flesh has been devoured, the walrus simply spits out the remaining shells. As effective as their unique spitting technique is in feeding, it is often little protection against the Arctic's other predators. While healthy adult walruses are more than capable of defending themselves, polar bears will rush the herd on the beach, attacking any individual that is crushed or injured in the sudden exodus. Even in the water, they are not entirely safe with killer whales known to target calves or otherwise unwary walruses from the depths. With their predators equally determined and well-equipped, the seemingly relaxed walrus must remain ever ready in the unforgiving Arctic. From the tropical forests and grasslands of Southeast Asia to the dry savanna and arid regions of Southern Africa, the cobra strikes fear into all that cross its path. And this is by design. The name cobra is derived from Portuguese for hooded snake. There are over 20 species of true hooded cobras spread across two continents. And it is this intimidating appendage that lends this snake its fearsome reputation. But the cobra's hood hides a secret weakness in this seemingly indomitable animal. While non-venomous snakes, such as boas and pythons, will grab their prey and squeeze them to death, cobras rely on venom to kill. With relatively small fangs and a slender build, cobras are more vulnerable during these hunts than their bigger, more muscular counterparts. Needing to bite down and hold on to their prey in order to deploy their deadly venom against smaller animals, this aggressive technique poses little danger to the cobra. But against larger game, such as rats or even other snakes, if the cobra fails to disable their quarry immediately, they can easily be injured or killed in the ensuing struggle. This is where the fearsome hood comes into play. Rearing up to display its characteristic flattened neck, 
the cobra appears bigger than it actually is, effectively bluffing its way out of dangerous situations. It is the dramatic impact of this unique display that has made the species a favorite of snake charmers. But some cobra species have another, more dangerous weapon in their defensive arsenal. While all venomous snakes secrete venom from their fangs, spitting cobras have modified this trait to launch long-range assaults. By contracting the venom glands, Spitting cobras squeeze small amounts of venom at high pressure through their fangs. Enlarged fang holes direct the venom upward and outward. The snake simultaneously flaying its head to widen the target area of the spray. Projecting over two meters with lightning speed, the venom combines neurotoxins and cytotoxins allowing it to damage nerve tissue and shut down individual cells. If this deadly spray is inhaled or comes into contact with a cut, it can cause serious damage. But the real target is the eyes, with the cobra seeking to blind its attacker. Predated upon in the wild by birds of prey, rival snakes and mongooses, for spitting cobras, this vicious defensive mechanism can be a lifesaver. So instinctive is this ability that baby snakes are able to spit immediately after hatching, and some species have been reported to spit even after death. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans, one species of fish has evolved its talent for spitting to be used in a variety of applications. Small and charismatic creatures, jawfish average just 10 centimeters in length. Occupying challenging terrain and ready to duck for cover at the slightest hint of danger, there are currently over 80 described species of jawfish, with more being discovered all the time. Exhibiting great variety in their appearance, they share the common attributes of enlarged heads, bulbous eyes, and cavernous mouths. The huge mouth of the jawfish is kept busy digging burrows. Spitting excavated material to one side, jawfish tunnel vertically into the sea floor in order to create cleverly engineered burrows. It is here they will spend the majority of their lives safely ensconced from the ocean's myriad of predators. Scooping up mouthfuls of sand, pebbles and coral rubble into its enlarged mouth chamber, the jawfish contracts its gills to force the debris back out again. Narrowing the mouth opening creates increased pressure, 
allowing the jawfish to fire targeted debris at unwelcome intruders. Unable to either outswim or fight off the many predators that target them, jawfish are extremely vulnerable in the open water. Rarely venturing far from their burrows, their remarkable mouths are their greatest asset in preparing and maintaining a ready escape route. When danger has passed by, a jawfish will cautiously check that the coast is clear before re-emerging from the safety of their burrows. Their spitting is not an effective deterrent to predators, it can be used against fellow jawfish. Investing so much of their energy into digging and fastidiously cleaning their burrows, it is no surprise that jawfish are highly territorial. And when a rival crosses the boundary, the resident jawfish will accurately spit gravel in a sign of aggression to ward the intruder away. Jawfish's reliance on its mouth does not end with digging and spitting, with the males of the species also practicing mouth brooding. Carefully incubating their eggs while holding them in their mouths, the fathers-to-be will open wide to aerate their young, foregoing food themselves until the newborns are hatched. day draws to a close, the jawfish retires to the safety of its burrow. Covering and perfectly concealing the entrance, they may sleep safely within. When it comes to stings, for most there is one animal that comes immediately to mind. Perhaps the best known member of the insect world, the bee. With close to 20,000 species and a distribution covering every continent except Antarctica, bees are a remarkably diverse group of insects. Not all bees make honey, and not all bees are able to sting. But for the many different varieties of honeybee, stinging is a vital defense mechanism in protecting this invaluable resource. As pollinating insects, bees are dependent on flowering plants for their survival, and vice versa. So while the bee's armory is not to be dismissed, it is the mutually beneficial relationship with their food source that has assured their survival, with plants and bees co-evolving for tens of millions of years. With the bees travelling from flower to flower, they transmit pollen from one plant to another, allowing the plants to make seeds and reproduce. For the bees' part, the pollen they collect is stored in their hives, where it becomes honey to feed the colony. 
and it is in defending this hive where the bee's sting is most useful. Honeybee stings using a modified egg depositor called an ovipositor. Barbed at the end, when the stinger enters its victim, it lodges, enabling venom to be pumped from the venom sac. This process triggers the release of alarm pheromones from the bee, drawing other bees to join the fight. While capable of repeatedly stinging thin-skinned animals, when it comes to thicker-skinned mammals, such as humans, the honeybee's barb is lodged tight, tearing loose from its abdomen and causing its death. However, the relentless sting lives on, pumping venom until its sac is completely drained. For bees, their sting is often a last resort, with their astonishing abilities in the air generally able to get them out of trouble. While it is a common misconception that bee flight defies the laws of physics, their aerial mastery is certainly uncanny. Flapping their wings approximately 230 times per second, bees are capable of attaining speed, height, precise maneuverability and carrying relatively heavy loads. But for all their advantages, bees know a great many predators in the wild. Among them, their close relative, the ant. Seizing individual bees while foraging or raiding hives for the energy-rich honey stored inside, ants pose a constant threat to many species of bee. Social insects, the inspiring teamwork of honeybees is evidenced in their intricately structured, highly organized hives. Clear division of labor, shared care for the young, and complex communication networks, a healthy beehive is a perfect picture of harmonious living. While their sting remains a dangerous weapon, the bee's greatest asset is their ability to cooperate. Throughout almost the entirety of the world's vast ocean network, one of the most successful carnivores is also one of the most unassuming, the jellyfish. From the cold, sunless depths to warm tropical waters, the jellyfish drifts silent and dangerous throughout almost every ocean on the planet and reaches into many of its freshwater systems. Thank you. 
With over 200 species, jellyfish are made up of a gelatinous or jelly-like body, which can pulsate to propel them through the water, trailing an array of tentacles behind. It is these tentacles that, in many species, provide both a potent form of self-defense and a powerful attack. Exhibiting a stripped-down anatomical design, jellies dispense with extravagances such as a stomach, intestines or lungs. Instead, taking in nutrients and oxygen through their cells, and with the most basic nervous system of any multicellular animal, the jellyfish is built to simply kill, eat and make more jellyfish, tasks it has proven highly successful at over millennia. With limited control over their movement, jellies are vulnerable to predation in the open water. However, the brutal stings of their tentacles afford great protection. And aside from sharks, sea turtles and a handful of fish species, the most common jellyfish predator is other jellyfish. Trailing their deadly tentacles like dragnets, jellies practice a distinctively passive form of hunting, feeding on whatever drifts their way, be it fish, crustaceans or plankton. Each jellyfish tentacle is packed with thousands of microscopic stinging threads called nematocysts. Triggered by touch, even lightly brushing against a jellyfish's tentacle builds pressure inside the nematocysts, causing them to uncoil. Millions of nematocysts fire into their victim, delivering paralyzing neurotoxic venom in less time than it takes to blink. Stinging is not the only weapon in the jelly's armory. Most jellyfish are transparent, making them almost invisible to both predators and prey within the water. But some species of jelly opt for the opposite tactic, employing bioluminescence to stand out, particularly in the dark ocean depths. The purpose of this mesmerizing chemical reaction is not fully understood, but it is understood to be a technique to startle and dissuade would-be predators. Man-o-war is not technically a jellyfish, but employs the same hunting tactic with a unique modification. Also known as the floating terror, this creature dangles its tentacles like fishing lines beneath a snail-shaped structure filled with gas, allowing it to hunt from the surface. incredibly effective technique, it does place the man of war at the mercy of the winds, which can see them swept ashore in their thousands. The oldest multi-organ animal on the planet, the jellyfish's simple design and deadly stinging tentacles have allowed it to hunt the ocean for over 500 million years, a legacy that is set to continue.
seeming to combine the anatomy of several different animals into one, the echidna sports a blanket of porcupine-like spines that serve as its greatest defense asset. While far more timid than the dreaded snake woman of Greek mythology after whom they were named, echidnas, like their namesake, combine the qualities of reptiles and mammals. Despite their superficial resemblance to anteaters and hedgehogs, echidnas are only one of two surviving members of the unique order of monotremes, or egg-laying mammals. Thus, the echidna's closest relative is another unlikely creature, the platypus. Found only in Australia and New Guinea, echidnas descend from an ancient aquatic ancestor and appear to have borrowed from a number of different animals as they evolved for life on the land. Sporting the elongated snout of an anteater, while female echidnas do lay eggs like reptiles, they also make use of a pouch similar to that of a kangaroo. But it is their dense coat of spiny armor that is their most distinctive acquisition, forming an overwhelming obstacle to their many predators. Targeted by snakes, monitor lizards, dingoes and more, the echidna's spikes are designed to wound or even blind anything that attempts to bite them. Up to five centimeters in length, the echidna's spikes are composed of the same material as human fingernails. Coating almost their entire body, when threatened, the echidna digs its vulnerable underside into the earth with its powerful legs, presenting an impenetrable morass of needles to its attacker. With relatively poor eyesight, the bulk of the echidna's diet is nonetheless made up of tiny ants and termites. Hunting with their highly sensitive snouts, not only are echidnas equipped with an excellent sense of smell, they also boast an array of electro-sensors. Detecting the faint electrical signals from insect bodies, echidnas are unexpectedly skillful hunters of their prey. While their short legs account for their distinctive waddling gait, echidnas are strong-limbed animals and employ their enlarged claws to dig out their food with tireless efficiency. And like a microscopic version of their hide, the echidna's long tongue is coated in tiny spines, making for an inescapably sticky appendage to slurp up their plentiful prey. Thanks in large part to their hardened hide, Echidnas are able to live slow and long. Resistant to stress, echidnas have a slow metabolism, allowing them to make the most of their food.
and with an average temperature of 32 degrees, echidnas have the lowest body temperature of any mammal. With remarkable longevity for their size, this mysterious armored creature is rumored to live almost half a century in the wild. Serene and graceful as they glide through the water, when threatened, the stingray packs a lethal punch. Most commonly found in the coastal shallows of temperate seas, there are about 200 species of stingray. Relative of the shark, stingrays exhibit a very different temperament. Preferring to keep a low profile, they spend much of their time blended almost seamlessly into the sea floor. But despite their tranquil nature, stingrays have become infamous for their potent weapon that trails behind them. Stingray tails carry up to two barbed stings covering a thin sheath of skin where venom is concentrated. Whipping their tails, the sting punctures the attacker's body, tearing the sheath and allowing a potent cocktail of venom to enter the wound. Many stingray stings also feature serrated edges, meaning they cause massive tissue damage when retracted. With its venom remaining potent even after death, the stingray's sting is the stuff of legends, once believed capable of dissolving stone. And while the barbed spines of the tails have been used to fashion weapons such as daggers and spears, for the stingray, it is purely used in self-defense. Predated upon by sharks, seals, and large fish, the stingray is more than capable of warding off or indeed killing any would-be attackers. Deadly tails are not the stingray's only means of protection. Working their flattened bodies beneath the sand, stingrays employ a highly efficient form of camouflage. With eyes situated atop their heads, they can keep watch for danger and, if spotted, will raise their barbed tails in the manner of a scorpion, reminding any would-be predators of the threat they pose. Skeletons made of cartilage rather than bone, the stingray is able to propel itself through the water by the distinctive wave-like undulations of its body.
While stingrays do hunt for fish, the bulk of their diet is made up of creatures that many other ocean predators are simply unable to find, targeting clams, crustaceans and other small animals hidden from sight. Stingrays utilize electroreceptors to pick up on the faint electric fields they generate. Using this sixth sense, stingrays scour the sea floor like flying metal detectors, digging out their hidden quarry and crushing through protective shells with their powerful mouth parts. designed creature, the stingray has swum the ocean for 100 million years and is well equipped to continue. The true embodiment of a creepy crawly the centipede is armed with a unique pair of poisonous stingers to paralyze its prey. With an estimated 8,000 species found in various habitats all over the world, the hardy centipede is an incredible survivor. But vulnerable to dehydration, it is in the moist jungle environment where centipedes are at their most abundant and most intimidating. Reaching lengths of 30 centimeters, centipedes are encased in a tough exoskeleton comprised of varying numbers of body segments, each with its own pair of legs. With leg numbers ranging from 30 to over 350, despite their name, no centipede has exactly 100 legs. Regardless of their number, their multitude of limbs grants them speed, dexterity, and exceptional climbing capabilities. Despite having poor eyesight, centipedes are highly successful predators, seeking out their prey with their finely attuned antennae. Primarily feeling their way over all kinds of terrain, the antennae are sensitive to vibration and are coated in chemoreceptors, granting the centipede superior senses of motion tracking and smell. Known as poison claws, the centipede's head is equipped with a unique set of modified fangs called forcipules. Fed by venom glands, these pincer-like appendages bite down on the centipede's prey. Applying an almost unshakable grip while they deliver their paralyzing toxin.
Existing on an almost exclusively carnivorous diet, once the centipede's prey is immobilized by its venom, they are able to consume it. Using their mouth parts to tear small portions at a time, centipedes patiently ingest their victims piece by piece. Generalist predators, centipedes will take on almost anything within their size range, meaning the bigger the centipede, the bigger their quarry. Large specimens, such as the giant Amazonian centipede, are able to widen their diet to include small birds, rodents and lizards. Wrapping itself around its victim, it waits for its paralyzing venom to take effect before beginning the grisly process of eating. Although the centipede is among the world's largest land-based invertebrate predators, it is not immune from becoming prey itself. Targeted by mice, snakes and spiders, with sufficient numbers, even smaller creatures such as ants can overpower an imprudent centipede. Should the centipede find itself in the grip of a predator, it has an emergency escape mechanism, able to break off and sacrifice a few legs to make its getaway. While they may have legs to spare, centipedes also have the ability to regenerate lost limbs, allowing this resilient creature to crawl on and fight another day. high-pressure jets of water at mollusks grants the walrus access to its most valued food source. Delivering venom through its fangs when hunting, the cobra can also spit their poison over two meters in self-defense. And spitting is vital to the survival of jawfish, allowing them to create and protect their burrow fortresses. The bee's sting not only deters potential threats, but releases an attack pheromone, calling for backup in the fight. The jellyfish's tentacles do not discriminate, automatically delivering their venom to anything they come in contact with. Echidnas are constantly protected by their densely packed needle-like armor. The power of the stingray's barbed tail and the potency of the venom is the stuff of legends. The carnivorous centipede is granted access to a wide range of prey thanks to its paralyzing sting. Where we have evolved intellectually, animals continue to evolve physically, granting them the powerful weaponry found in the animal armory.